Uh, our next speaker, Professor y uh, Yoram Cohen, um, as you can see, uh, is a professor of uh, uh, serology in Tel Aviv University, uh, expert in wisdom literature and uh, scribal culture, especially uh, uh, when it comes to, to the West, to ancient Syria. And today, properly, uh, we will hear about Gilgamesh goes, uh, goes West. Uh, no. Thank you, dear speaker. Thanks to the audience. Um, I will be speaking about Gilgamesh uh, Goes West, but just as an intro to the event we are celebrating, I will add a few words. Um, back in the days when I was a student at Tel Aviv University, on the 20th of um, February, 97, there was an event celebrating the appearance of this book in, uh, in Tel Aviv, Municipality Hall, and Yaakov was there, as well as uh, Shin Shifra, and it was a major event uh, that I attended, as I said, as a student. Uh, we should, and Shin Shifra read a, a few of, of the pieces, <coughs> including one which highly influenced me, and uh, this is from a, um, a selection which she translated, and it must be mentioned here also, together with Yitzhak Tzfati. So Yitzhak Tzfati was also part of, of this uh, project, and it's a Sumerian uh, poem, a love poem, probably. And I will read in Hebrew now these few um, stanzas just for the impression that, uh, in order to convey some of the feelings that I had when I heard Shifra reading it, of course, uh, I cannot... Uh, imitate uh, Shin Shifra in a dramatic uh, way of reading, but I will try at least, and we have the translation. Yonati, 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 Tamati, Tamati, Dvash le'imai oldata sheli, gafni halacha, dibshi ha-matok, pe-matok ke-dvash le'ima sheli. Enaich im takli mi-beten, boi achot ahuva sheli, pich im tekuli amirad, and this melody has, I would say, haunted me at that very minute and haunts me to this day. We move now to speak uh, about my interest and my research of the transmission of Gilgamesh, who needs no uh, introduction here, uh, to the Western regions, regions. And I will say that reading the Epic of Gilgamesh in the Western reaches of the cuneiform world during the Late Bronze Age was a byproduct of student activity at the scribal schools. Scribal schools established far from Babylonia were just the places where the classics of the civilized world were studied and read as the final stage of schooling in regions where Akkadian was a foreign language. After mastering the basics of schooling by studying the lexical lists in their varying degrees of difficulty, students then progressed to more complicated materials. They encountered the technical corpus, by which I mean omens, incantations, and medical texts, and Sumerian and Akkadian literature, Gilgamesh, Atrahasis, the instructions of Shurupak, here the advice that we heard now from Noga, the Ballad of Early Rulers, Nergal and Eresh Kigal, Adapa, Enlil and Namzitara, The Date Palm and the Tamarisk, The Message of Lu Dingera, The Fable of the Fox, and a variety of Naru literature, which is legends and stories of the Sargoni kings. Amir Gilan, I suppose, will be talking about that later. And also proverbs. They are all attested albeit in an uneven distribution and in various degrees of preservations in many major late Bronze Age sites, including El Amarna, also Megiddo in Canaan, which has also a, 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 a fragment of the Gilgamesh epic, and uh, elsewhere, and we will discuss these sites soon. If we want to think about the social function of studying this type of literature, then we can appreciate its ped ped pedagogical uh, value as well as its cultural capital, and this no, needs no further uh, elaboration. Now I will survey 
uh, a few of the tablets found in the West of Gilgamesh, the fragments. But I will give particular attention uh, to two examples from which I will draw some conclusions about the nature of the epic itself in its Akkadian uh, uh, version, and then also related to the theme that Noga introduced here, the possible expansion and transmission of Mesopotamian literature or cuneiform literature into in other spheres. I will talk about Khatusha as one example and Emma as the other example. But first we can introduce the fragment of the epic from Megiddo. It was found in the 50s on the, on the surface of the tail, actually not on the tail, but um, uh, um, just, just at the outskirts of it. So you can see the, the ancient sites of the Labour on Z, including Barilan University, where we are now. And uh, it's very broken, as you see, uh, but that's uh, comparable to a tablet from Ur, Middle Babylonia, and a standard Babylonian, and the standard Babylonian version of tablet uh, 7. The other two sites that I now introduce are Ugarit and Emar. I will come to Emar again at the end of my talk, but just now about Ugarit. And we see the city here on the Syrian coast with its two harbors. And there, in a quite spectacular, uh, under quite spectacular uh, circumstances, the epic was found along with many, many other literary texts in um, a place which is called, which was named Maison d'Urtenu, or the House of Urtenu, after the, uh, um, its owner, so one can presume, and in a niche in a wall were stacked all the cuneiform uh, tablets relating to the school uh, curriculum and much else. Um, it's important in the fa very fact that it fully preserves the, oh, that's not good, that it came upside down, so, uh, yes. Okay, so it's uh, the other way around. Let's hope we don't see more of this. Let's p perhaps quickly check it. That we don't run into this problem. Yeah, it's okay. So, uh, excuse me here. So anyway, it's, ah, now it's good. Okay, so you have it before you. Shanak Baimu Ish Dimati or Il Dimati. And uh, that's the importance of this fragment. I do mention that I base my work here on now what is the most complete edition of the almost near complete edition of uh, the epic in the EBL site in the Electronic Babylonian Literature a site which brings together all of these manuscripts and re-edits and, and, and uh, translates them. <coughs> now I move to uh, Khatusha and talk, talk about Gilgamesh in Khatusha. The Gilgamesh is attested in Khatusha in Akkadian, and it's also translated to Hittite and Hurrian. Now, usually people consider, although we have to think about this a little bit uh, um, um, more, more in seriousness, people think that um, despite the pitiful remains that we have in the Hittite capital in Hatusha, um, that Gilgamesh, when translated into Hurrian and Hittite, unlike omen or wisdom compositions, which were faithfully uh, translated, in bilingual tablets sometimes, uh, what one is facing is not a literally tra translation of the Akkadian, but probably some paraphrases or some adaptations of the Babylonian story. This is a, a possibility. So from this we understand that the intention of these texts was not simply to drill one, to improve one's ability in Akkadian, but also seeing that these texts were had some kind of meaning or some kinds of context outside of the classroom and had some kind of social impact, so we can uh, assume. So the school curriculum resonated out of the classroom in Khatusha, if, if we can imagine that. Now, the, uh, the Akkadian version consists of three different testimonia. We have uh, three, the first is four pieces out of which three belong to the same tablet. You can see uh, how pitiful the remains are. And they were recovered in Temple 16 of the upper city of Khatusha, 
It's just it's building up here. It doesn't matter too much up here. Uh, but it is important to to mention. Um, Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so in temp Temple 16, then we have a second fragment from the Great Temple, and then a very small piece coming from the palace from Buyukane. Uh, it's so broken that only the words dreams and my friend, Ibri, are preserved, but this leaves little doubt that it is indeed Gilgamesh. It is interesting to note that the fragments found in Temple 16 um, um, uh, are not the only literature which was found there, and along this was also found the composition, uh, the Hurrian uh, Hittite song of release. So it's interesting to see that it's not only the, the context is a bit obscure, we, we don't know exactly why, but we can see that this epic is distributed uh, throughout the city. Now we also have a Hurrian version, and they resist translation because of our insufficient knowledge of the Hurrian language, especially when we have such meager remains. As you see, no more than half lines for incomplete tablets. But we can see that enough survived, enough has survived that we can see that it was given a Hurrian flavor because it mentions Hurrian gods and goddesses. One colophon identifies the tablet as the Epic of Gilgamesh. And we have another colophon of the Hurrian Epic transmitting in interesting information. Fourth tablet of Huawa, not finished. Bachvarova in her book from, 16, from 2016 wonders if this is not evidence that, that the protagonist, Huawa, was a sort of local hero who was provided with his own epic story in the western regions of the cuneiform world. Of course, this is a, hyper, a hypothesis we, we do not know. But uh, we know that independent stories about Gilgamesh and Huawa may have risen in different cultural contexts. The appearance of Gilgamesh and Huawa in the Qumran Book of Giants may speak of such Western local traditions, but th almost nothing is preserved in that story. And now I move to discuss the Hittite version. We have three tablets of the epic. Um, tablet one has at least four exemplars, because they overlap, so we see it's uh, copies. And uh, out of the three tablets, the first tablet of the epic is the one that can be best reconstructed. So we have most pieces of that. It should not come as a surprise to anybody interested in the history of ped pedagogy because beginnings of works are usually the best attested. This is because students, as you know, are very enthusiastic when they start a new text, yes? But after a while, you know, they get bored and they move, they move to something else. Uh, tablet. Two is reconstructed from uh, three independent pieces, and tablet three has some manuscripts which are partly overlapping. So this means, in short, to sum up, that the epic was uh, copied. Yes, it was just not a standard uh, uh, one single copy which was stored somewhere, but probably copied and studied in, uh, um, in, in, various, uh, 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 in various school contexts. Now, Tablet 1 begins, begin, brings the beginning of the epic until the defeat of Huawa. Tablet 2, very fragmented remains of the heroes coming back home in the Ishtar episode. And Tablet 3 stretches from the death of Enkidu to the meeting with Siduri and later with Ushanabi. Now, I want to talk about the section of the journey to the cedar forest and the encounter with Huawa. Well, it's not in a good condition. We will see it in a minute. But uh, Beckman and uh, Andrew George realized the connection uh, in team between the Hittite uh, fragment and a newly recently, rather recently newly discovered uh, tablet from the Suleimania Museum, which gives us the opening lines of the fifth tablet, the journey of, into the cedar forest and includes a magnificent description, which, and this is what I argue now, is not only echoed in the Hittite translation, but actually translated word by word. And this has, of course, uh, interesting repercussions about the history of the epic. So I just read a few lines here. I'm sorry that it's not larger, but I hope you'll appreciate it. It starts as, they stood marveling at the forest, observing the height of the cedars, observing the way into the forest. 
where Humbaba came and went, there was track, and the paths were in good order, and the way was well trodden. They were gazing at the cedar mountain dwelling of gods, throne, days of goddesses, and so on. And now it becomes a description of the wood, of the forest. Uh, the cedar was capped with lumps of resin for 60 cubits height, resin oozed forth, drizzling like rain. And throughout the forest, a bird began to sing. Birds were answering one another. A constant din was the noise. A solitary tree cricket, cricket set off a noisy chorus. They were singing a song, blowing the pipe. A wood pigeon was moaning. A turtle dove calling in answer. At the call of the stork, the forest exults, and so on and so on. And then at 24 and 25, Incredibly, monkey mothers sing aloud, the youngster monkey shrieks like a band of musicians and drummers. Daily, they bash out the rhythm in the presence of Humwaba. So it's an amazing uh, uh, um, scene, which is almost unparalleled, I would say, I dare to say, in Akkadian, language, in, in Akkadian literature, because of this very vivid description of, uh, of the forest with, full of, uh, with a sense of humor, one, one might say. Um, and what I argue is that this actually is found in the Hittite et, uh, fragment not only as some kind of paraphrase or some kind of uh, illusion, but an actual translation. So I want you to notice lines 25 and 26 taken from the Sulimania tablet. Birds and monkeys and cricket all make a dim that we saw in these lines. Like a band of singers and Tigu instrumentists, they beat out the music in front of Humbaba, and the same is found in the Hittite version. Well, we don't know how to pronounce Hittite, so I dare not read it, but Hursad Mesh Ashishtarna Egir Pamash Ishtu Eme Arkush Katari Broken Den Pan Dingir Huwara Iwar Lunar, Lu number two now. U, Lu number two, Shir, three, Chazi Kanzi. In the midst of the cedar mountains, the song from their mouth is chanted in front of Huawa. They loudly beat out the music like musicians and singers. And this, as far as I can see, it is an almost literal translation of the Hittite, um, uh, of, of the Akkadian, of the Akkadian uh, uh, version. This, of course, has uh, uh, influence of over how we view the history of the old Babylonian version because what it was received in Hatusha was something of that period, post OB, late OB. So this means that the Sulimania version that we have, which is the standard Babylonian late text from the first millennium, already existed in the second millennium, in the, in the closing, mid second millennium or closing centuries of the, of the second millennium. I pass now to Emar, and this is the, another example of what, what happens when texts tra travel. Sometimes, indeed, they are translated. Sometimes they, they also offer us an opportunity <laughs> to look at tablets. Um, uh, they preserve for us, I would put it like this, they preserve for us a tradition which has already been lost in the standard Babylonian version or somehow didn't make it and was changed in the standard Babylonian version. The Hittite, the, the fragments are very poor. They come from the temple M1 of the Zubala family, again, with a lot of other literature uh, there. And uh, we'll examine this fragment in a minute, but I just want to point out a parallel which has been noticed long ago, already with the beginning of Gilgamesh studies and then repicked by Aaron Schaffer and Neely Summit uh, also studied it. And uh, the, it was realized that in Gilgamesh 5, as we now reconstruct the lines, it doesn't matter, the phrase Ashlu Shushlushu can be found together with the, with the Sumerian version of this proverb. This, verb, this, uh, this verse or proverb actually can be also found in Kohelet. And it reads, Vachuta Meshulash lo a free ply rope is not easily broken. Uh, you can translate it exactly like it's preserved in, in the Gilgamesh epic. Now, I am going to argue the following, is that this is only one couplet of four, actually, which are great, 
gradual, uh, uh, they have a grade moving on, moving from one to two, two and two three. This is the ML version, okay, together with the verb, with the verb which is only preserved in the ML version, and somehow didn't make it. The text was corrupt or whatever. Didn't make it into the late versions. And it goes like one friend is alone, but two are two. Ibru ishten ishten mashina shinama. Though they need maybe weak, two broken, and then lumush chaltzituma. This hasn't been translated properly, I believe. So I offer a first here. Lushita, the ones who put the one who puts before you an obstacle. Two will overcome the obstacle or him, and then two being warm, and then our verse that we know already, Ashlushu, a free ply rope is not easily broken. And this fits wonderfully with Kohelet, uh, third, uh, ch a fourth chapter, in exactly the same order. So I will read now the Hebrew. Echad, this is my translation into Hebrew, parentheses, I'm working now together with Nathan Wasserman on a new Gilgamesh uh, tradition, uh, translation, <laughs> hopefully it will be out soon, I would say. Um, so I'm reading now from our translation, Echad, Uvak Echad, Veyachid, Shnaim, Hem Shnaim. And now Kohelet, Tovim Ashnaim, Tovim Ashnaim in Echad, Asher Yesh Lahem Sachar Tov Be'amalam, גילגמש, גם אם הם חלשים, טובים השניים מן האחד. כי אם יפלו, האחד יקים את חברו, ואילו האחד שיפול, ואין שני להקימו. And 77, מי ששם לפניך מכשול לא יצלח, כאשר שניים, כאשר ישנם שניים, סליחה, וי"ב, ואם יתקפו האחד, השניים יעמדו נגדו. שניים הם חמים. And this is the Emma. Two are hot, and then you'd alef, גם אם ישכבו שניים וחם להם, ולאחד איך יחם, חוט המשולש לא במהרה ינתק, והחוט המשולש לא במהרה ינתק. So we have here actually four verses, and now the English, we have here actually four verses that are contained in a unit. Now we, we, we don't need to go too much into discussion of the transmission, and I think that Noga already illustrated the way that these things work. But I do think that we need to realize the more and more tablets are being discovered and the Babylonian literature, the more and more reconstructed nowadays, that Gilgamesh contains many phrases and many proverbs in inserted within the uh, dialogue between the various characters, each conveying a certain mood of wisdom, I would say, by these proverbs. So Gilgamesh has his own set of proverbs, Enkidu has his set of proverbs, Siduri has her proverbs, and Utnapishtim, and so on and so forth. So uh, these were proverbs that were circulating, and nowadays are also attested in other works. We can follow them so we can understand, as again Noga has shown, how this disperses. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the author of Kohelet, most likely not, knew Gilgamesh, but that was sort of a living tradition that linked these four couplet, couplets under the, um, the idea of friendship. <laughs> what is friendship? So this is also astonishing that it's together. My last sentence. So the Epic of Gilgamesh, surely the most celebrated piece of literature from the ancient Near East, and certainly one of the best studies, the study does not cease to hold our fascination as it did for the ancients. We explored how the epic traveled to the western ends of the cuneiform world, more than a thousand miles away from Babylonia. And what happened to it once it arrived to Hatusha, Emma, and for next time, Ugarit and Megiddo. Thank you.